Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, we are on to the third market structure known as monopolistic competition. All right, so let's go through some of the characteristics like we've done with monopoly and perfect competition. First one is the number of sellers. There is a relatively large number of sellers. The product type is a differentiated product. Control of the price, some, but they do have control. It is an easy to enter and to exit. And there is a need for advertising. So let's look at some examples of monopolistic competition. All right? Let's go back in the Wayback Machine to when I was a young boy in high school. And this was the kind of hot dog cart we saw on the streets of New York. All right, if I put on my laser pointer here, we can look at, what do we have? Hot dogs, hot sausage, hot pretzel, cold soda, spring water Snapple. Spring water was not on the list when I was in high school. Cold soda was, hot dog, sausage, pretzel. The guy's selling literally four things. I worked a hot dog cart when I was just out of high school and we had three things. Hot dog, sausage, and cold soda. It's all we sold. All right? Now, what, what did the hot dogs look like? This is what the hot dogs look like on every cart in New York City, known as the dirty water dog. Right? And if you ask me in class, I'll explain to you why that is. Now, that looks like a very homogeneous good. Pretty much was. There was a little differentiated, but not a ton. And then what happened was the cart started to change a little bit. So now you have this hot dog cart. And look at the items this guy has. He's got to have 20 items going on up here. Different types of drinks. He's got a lunch menu. Right, my guy's lunch and dinner menu is the same. So is the breakfast menu. Excellent breakfast sometimes in New York City hot dog. Right, now, so you see there's thousands of these. When we talk about the number of firms, thousands of these on the streets of New York. Right, the products are now becoming a little different. What kind of control do they have over the price? Because they're changing the style, right? This guy's got a gyro down here going on, okay? Because they're changing the style of the product, they wanna advertise, and you can see that with, right here we have the two umbrellas, which was on the first guy's cart, but now we've got a digital board here, the guy over on Little Neck, you can call up and place an order and then come pick up, all right? So you see the advertising, they're competing with price but they're also competing with product right now we have this guy's hot dog cart I'm gonna be honest with you I don't know what they're selling all right but they're selling something different than what I used to get when I was on the streets of New York all right so that's one market that's monopolistic then we come to my favorite market that's monopolistic right differentiated good this pie and this pie all have cheese all have sauce all have dough yet they're different. The pie here can be found at this pizzeria. This pizzeria is known as one of the best pizzas in the United States of America. Voted number one, I think three or four times over the last few years, all right? This is DeForest, the guy's been there since 1960. He hand makes the pizza, he rips the, the basil and puts it on top of the pie. It's actually a show when you go there. All right, so those are the different examples of monopolistic. Okay, so we want to look at monopolistic and output, right? Price and output in the monopolistic market. First thing we're going to look at is the demand for the monopolistic good is highly elastic. Right now, let's do a quick little review. When we were looking at a perfect competitor, he had a horizontal line. He was perfectly elastic. Then we looked at the monopoly where his, down, his demand curve, while downward sloping, was a little steeper right very more vertical we would say that he had an inelastic I would say the monopolist was highly inelastic right this is the monopolist highly inelastic demand and then finally we have what we're looking at today which is the monopolistic right and he has a highly elastic demand curve so he's a combination of these two right if the perfect competitor in the monopoly had a baby it would be the monopolistic so he has a downward sloping demand curve because he does have some control over the price. 
that pizza place I just showed you in Brooklyn, DeFaris, he charges $5 a slice. Gino's in town, uh, Roses, uh, Center, none of those guys can charge $5 a slice because they're not offering anything special. All right, now let's go looking, continue to look at this. There is short run profit or loss for the monopoly. Some places are making money, some places aren't making money in the short run. However, like in the other two market structures, right? You gotta get this through your head. MR equals MC is the key. We produce where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. What about the long run, you say? Good question. The long run, we have normal profit. Is that the same as zero economic profit, Mr. Mooney? Yes, it is the same. Normal profit is accounting profit. Zero economic profit. You're doing no better than you would have done in your other activity, right? Then we have entry and exit. That's why the, once there's profit, firms will enter the market and that profit will disappear. What you have to understand though, different than the perfect competitor, when the firm enters the market, it's not a change in the supply, it's the change in the demand, right? So if I open up a pizzeria in town because I know there's money being made selling pizza in Great Neck. I open up a pizza place. The demand for Geno's in town goes down because people are coming to my uh, pizza place. So the demand for Geno's goes down, a leftward shift of the demand in the MR, and they end up losing whatever profit they had. And that's because there's ease of entry and exit. And then the last thing we look at is they are inefficient. Why are they inefficient? because there is product variety. Why do we need all these different products? We don't, but people like having them, right? So, normally I would ask you to draw the graph, but I'll draw it for you. So let's look at the short run profit or loss, right? We have the quantity and we have the price axes, right? And then we draw our MR and we draw our demand curve, right? The MR is still downwards. The MR is below the demand curve for the same reason in the monopolist but you notice the slope of the curve is more elastic. It's a highly elastic demand curve. Then we add in our marginal cost curve. We go to where they intersect, all right? We dot that, MR equals MC, we draw our ATC curve, right? And now we draw our line from MR to MC, we get our output, we get the cost, we get the price, the price is above the ATC at quantity of one. So that area is our economic profit, all right? And you'll notice that the area of economic profit is not as large as it was for the monopolist because the demand curve is highly elastic, right? Compared to the monopolist. All right, so this is what my short run economic profit graph would look like. Then we'll show you, same concept, but what happens when the ATC is above the price at Q2 here, right? So in this place where MR equals MC is Q2, but ATC is greater than the price, the firm experiences a loss. So if we go back to the other graph, where they're experiencing profit, firms would enter and their demand curve would d d shift to the left, right? In this case, there's losses. Firms will leave the market and close, and other one, other the nah, the consumers will end up going to the pizza places that have stayed, and their demand curve and MR curve will shift to the right, finding an output that's a little bit higher, and maybe we end up here at zero. Okay, let's look at it in the long run, where we have zero economic profit, but we are covering our opportunity cost. Downward sloping, MR, MC. All right now look here. The ATC curve is tangent to, ATC is tangent to the demand curve, which means right here P2, the cost per unit is P2, the output is Q2, and the ATC is P2. So we have here zero economic profit. Are they efficient? No. Efficiency is over here, my friends. MC is equal to demand here, 
so they're allocative efficient, and ATC and price is equal to ATC here, that would be my productively efficient point. We don't care about that. We care about here, MR equals MC, profit maximizing. This is where we make our profit, most profit. We could make some profit here, however, not as much as we could make here. Okay, so let's talk about efficiency for a second. The monopolistic competitor is inefficient, productively inefficient. P is greater than ATC, as I showed you on the graph. He's allocative inefficient. P is greater than marginal cost. All right, if we bring back the graph. Okay, you can see this happening. Now, what's interesting with the monopolistic, because he has the ability to produce more at a lower cost, he is said to have excess capacity. So he could produce Q4 at a lower cost per unit. However, he would not maximize his profit. Therefore, he doesn't do it, and he leaves some of his factory uh, empty, not being used, and there's the capacity to produce more. So we say the monopolistic competitor has excess capacity. And you get that from taking the output where ATC is equal to MC and compare it to ATC equal to price. All right, and what's the reason for this efficiency, uh, inefficiency? Product variety, right? The firm constantly manages prices, products, and advertising. Just go back to that hot dog cart and look what that guy's doing. He's doing everything possible to uh, get people at his hot dog stand. Colors, everything, right? That's the best. So he's trying to say my product's different. He's saying that through better advertising. And we as consumers benefit by greater array of choices and better products. I will tell you, I do miss my traditional New York City hot dog. Uh, as of two summers ago, the only place I could find it was in front of the Museum of Natural History. And there was one guy selling just a regular hot dog. All right, and we benefit because we get different types of styles and we get brands and quality. So as I've said in the past, they're competing with each other, so we end up with better stuff. I don't know that we need all those things, but we do end up with better things. All right, that's all we have for monopolistic.